Hello, everybody, and welcome, welcome to Spirit Wisdom Wednesday, where we gather here together in the healing space and allow some beautiful spirit wisdom to flow through. I want to reintroduce myself to you. My name is Meredith. I'm a certified shamanic healer and reader. What I love to do in my heart-centered business called The Healing Hummingbird is to help healers and givers and spiritual go-givers reclaim their power to heal themselves and embrace um, the highest destiny that they have in this lifetime. So thank you so much for being here. And today I have all of my comforting crystals out because we are going to talk about reconciliation today. Um, if you are someone who's followed me for a while, you will notice that I don't often focus on topics that have to do specifically with another person. But this is something that seems to be a universal theme and Spirit really wanted to touch on to help us try to understand the situation better and perhaps even the other party better, get a better idea of what we need to do. So let's put our hands over our hearts today, really digging into this <laughs> reconciliation um, energy, which can be hard to talk about, but that's why we are doing this reading. Let's just take a couple mindful deep breaths together. Let's inhale in and exhale out. Inhale in and exhale out. Inviting our spirit guides to come near us now. Let's actually ask which person in my life is this reading meant for? Maybe someone you'd love to reunite with but just have no idea why? When you think of, when you feel the sensation, that warmth in your heart of making up, of reconciling, who is the first person that comes to your mind? And which group is that person associated with. Okay, you could hear, feel, see, or know that it's one, two, or three, or you could feel drawn to one of the piles or one of the sets of earrings that I'm going to show you. So a little bit of an unusual object today. So for group number one, you have these geode earrings. And then that is on top of, what is this called? The Tarot of the Divine. Group number two, you have these sort of turquoise and gold earrings. And then this is on top of the Divine Abundance Oracle deck. And then for group number three, you have these really cool kind of layered earrings. And then that is on top of the Angels and Ancestors Oracle Guide. All right, so we should have our groups selected. I will go ahead and move everything out of the way and we can get started with group number one. All right, let's get started with group number one. If you chose these geode earrings, let's go ahead and find out if your person is ready to reconcile or just what you need to know about the situation. Maybe you have some questions for spirit. It feels like with group number one, this might be an ex or someone that you used to be very close to, perhaps intimately. And it feels like um, with choosing the tarot deck that there's a lot of backstory. So a lot of history with this person that might give you a clue um, if this group is for you or not. Uh, but Spirit, what about group number one? Is their person ready to reconcile? What do they need to know? Are they ready to reconcile? Are they ready to make up, make amends? Okay, I'm feeling four for you. So this person may have been part of your foundation at one point. And number four is all about foundation and stability for me. Ooh. 
We have a couple standing out here, and then this one wanted to come out. Okay, let's stop there and see what we have. Ooh, yeah. First, we have the Three of Swords. That kind of supports what I was picking up immediately. The Ace of Cups. Um, this is definitely someone who was a romantic interest for you. The Queen of Wands. And the lovers, wow. I don't think that could be clearer. You guys heard me explain it before the cards flipped over. Yeah, so this would definitely be someone that you've been involved with uh, romantically before. It looks like there was a lot of emotional love there. Um, there was a really deep commitment, but there was some type of heartbreak that took place. Perhaps one of you ended up feeling betrayed um, let's see. I feel like you are the queen of wands in this situation. So you could um, either have strong fire placements or be a fire sign, sun, moon, or rising. Um, this is someone who is very charismatic, very attractive, very outgoing. Um, someone who's very passionate about what they're doing. So it could be that um, that caused some kind of disagreement or something feels a little disjointed here. Um, it could be that conflicts, like the styles of communication weren't matching. Um, it feels like one party in the relationship was like still and deep water, but maybe quite silent. And the other one was more expressive, more passionate. So that could have caused some type of separation. Um, let's get some animal oracle guidance here or spirit animal guidance. So when I lay these out and you will know if you're the viewer, if you chose pile number one and you had a romantic person in mind. Um, so I'll lay these out. One will be one of your energy since this is a general reading, it could go either way. And then it will be the other person. So for example, it could be like, your ex's energy and your energy here, just to give us some clarity on the dynamic. Okay. All right, for group number one, are they ready to reconcile with their person? What do we need to know about the dynamics going on here? Yeah, I can feel some kind of nervousness. Um, so I'm not quite sure yet what that's in reference to, but it feels like um, maybe you're nervous to talk to this person. Like I'm almost feeling like I could start shaking. I'm so nervous. So first we have whale and wolf. Okay. And then for the other person's energy, we have B. This one actually might be you. And Cheetah. So let's talk about these personalities here. This definitely lines up with the dynamic I was picking up on earlier with deep and still water, but that could lead to someone being quite silent. Um, in the middle of a dispute, or if you're trying to just have an honest conversation, this person could have a tendency to shut down and they give off this lone wolf energy. So they could be quite hard to figure out. Um, and that could, that could have caused some pain. Um, if you identify with this queen of wands energy up here, you're probably very warm, very vibrant, very affectionate, someone who wants to be very close to their partner, someone who wants to know what they're feeling, is not afraid to argue. And I can tell you right here, this person would probably just um, turn away from any type of conflict because they feel quite uncomfortable with that. They'd rather be alone than have conflict. So on, um, I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna take a shot and say that this is you, the viewer. If you are this queen of wands, you are someone who is a busy, busy bee. You'd be very positive, um, very vivacious, but very, hardworking, someone who is happy when they have lots and lots of things to do. A bee 
even like say that there's a B personality that's retired, they will make their own, they will create busyness because that's just how they enjoy um, their life. They like to work in within structure um, and create things. You're also very dynamic with the cheetah here. This is more fire energy. Um, you really, really go for it. You really shoot your shot. If you decide that something is aligned with what you believe in, you'll do it no matter what. You're very brave and a must, much faster moving energy than this person. So now that we have an idea of who you both are, let's make some room here and get the shared energy um, and get at the heart of the conflict. Okay, so we're gonna get out the lessons cards. <laughs> hello, Connie, hello, Dawn, welcome, welcome. Let me know what you guys think of this reading. This is quite different than what we usually do, but it feels like it was needed. So what's at the heart of this spirit? What is at the heart of this divide? Oh, judgment. I understand that everyone has their own unique path and challenges. It feels like this was a let's agree to disagree moment. I'm going to try to find, okay, good. That way it's not so, I love these cards, but they're glossy. So they have a glare on them sometimes. So it feels like, it feels like there was shared judgment here with this X. Um, just on the surface level, this type of warm, vibrant personality might judge this other calmer, more quiet, more introverted, but they can freeze up and clam up and not say how they're feeling, but they're very individualistic. So another way to read this would be very outgoing, optimistic, very introverted, might come off as cold. So if you're on the warmer end, you might have judged them as um, cold and cut off or impossible to communicate with or um, how do I, how can I possibly know if you care about me, if you won't express yourself, I can't just guess how you're feeling. Um, and this personality wouldn't mind arguing every once in a while, this person really would. So this person, this cold kind of, um, potentially introverted energy might have judged you as dramatic. Oh, and I just can't stand that. As a fire sign and a woman, I just can't stand that word. So if that was your experience, I'm so sorry. Um, but it looks like that really, really hurt. The shared judgment when that came out, it was a difficult realization because it feels like you guys are both very dedicated and were dedicated to the situation, but it just was not going to work out. And it felt like you both mutually understood that, but it was really painful. So let's get some angels and ancestors guidance in here and we'll put it again in the shared position between you. Is group number one ready to reconcile with their ex? It almost feels like, it's almost like I can hear somebody's spirit guides like talking to each other. Like, well, do they really need to? And they're like, well, maybe. So you, it might've crossed your mind recently. Something might've come up recently. Um, or it might be convenient to get along with them. Maybe you you know that you're going to be around them soon. Maybe you have children together. Something that would bring you together again. Okay, so this one flew out. We have drum, dream, and journey. Oh, so from that, I'm getting heartbeat. There was a lot of love here. I feel like there still is. I will say it does feel like as far as focus goes, this warmer person is looking back at this person, at the colder, more introverted person. There is a deep wisdom about this person. I don't want to totally dismiss either personality because again, you could be either of these. It feels like if this is you, the warmer energy, it feels like you are worried about them or looking back on the situation, wanting to reflect. I do have to say, based on these cards, I'm not seeing that they are looking back at you in the same way. That doesn't mean they're not ready to reconcile, but it could mean that you have more energy to give than this person does. 
but um, you probably already knew that <laughs> um, from the fallout of this. I feel like there's more guidance here in this particular deck. Let's get some more. Is group number one ready to reconcile? Oh, that one skipped out. Snake, shed old skin. I feel like that goes up here. And let's do one more. There it is. Moon, take note of intuitive messages. I feel like this is um, associated with you. I'm really getting viewer. I'm really getting that the person who chose this group who's watching this reading is the warmer side. And I feel like you're very intuitive and you may have been dreaming about this person recently and wondering what that is all about and if you need to take action. Because it feels like you are, you know, we talked about how brave you are. You are someone who's not afraid to take aligned action, um, even if it might not make logical sense. And I just did that over the weekend. So I relate to you if you are this person. Um, this other person, however, feels like they're just trying to move on. Okay. Um, so let's see. Let's get out the self-care book. Um, for those of you joining, um, we I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but this is a different form of divination that I've never done publicly. But on these pages, there's questions. So I want to know and maybe you're curious too, what this person would ask you if they could. So let's get a message out of here that has to do with your reconciliation. What does group number one's person want to ask them? Hmm. What makes you feel at home when you're away from home? And then we also have take a nature walk and note the sounds you hear below. So I feel like this person, um, is still, they still really care about you and they want you to be safe. You could have had to move at the end of the connection or something like that. So they really want the best for you. It feels like they may view um, your passion as turbulence. And I'm hearing that's not necessarily true. That's just how this person might view it. And I feel like they worry about you. It feels like this person maybe tried to parent you a little bit. Um, which probably didn't go over very well, <laughs> um, especially if you're a fire sign like me. We would not like that. Okay. All righty. I have a couple other guidance decks over here, and I feel like there's still more. So let's get a couple affirmations here to just feel where they're standing and you're standing as far as reconciliation goes. And then I think we'll get one more card and call it. All right. Let's start with the whale personality. Oh, that one skipped out. I am willing to let go. Yeah, that goes perfectly with the snake. I release others to experience experience whatever is meaningful to them, and I am free to create that which is meaningful to me. Yeah, this person's definitely viewing the situation as it's necessary to move on. Okay, and then let's get, oh, here's yours. I let go of all expectations. That's beautiful. I fr flow freely and lovingly with life. I love myself. I know that only good awaits me at every turn. Yeah, that's definitely what I was getting before, but I wanted to get more confirmation. So group number one, I do feel like reconciliation is possible with this ex on a very surface level. Okay, this person is not super comfortable. They view it as like moving backwards in time, which is not necessarily true. Okay, it's not at all, but it feels like... Um, if you are wanting or interested in reconciliation happening, it feels like you would need to initiate that yourself. It doesn't feel like this person's going to take action, but also let go of all expectations before you do that. So if you're going to approach them or send them a text or send them a letter or something, make sure that you are ready to be okay with however, however they choose to react to that. So go through, let yourself go wild in your mind of everything they could possibly do. What if they're angry? What if they're sad? What if they ignore me? What if they do nothing? 
if you find yourself in a space where you are okay, no matter what, then you will know you have let go of all expectations of any judgment of any need from this person. And then you would be ready to approach them if that is what you truly want within your heart. Okay. All right. Now let's get a divine abundance card in here. Get a final message for you, group number one. It feels like this was a hard situation. It does feel like you've been broken up for a while though. Like I would say at least a year or two, maybe even longer. Feels like long ago. I'm hearing like a different lifetime. So things probably have changed a lot for both of you since you were together. That one kind of bent in my hand. Divine source. Look at those hummingbirds. Help me know that at my deep that all my deepest needs will be met. Let me trust that you have a plan and the right actions will come. You are my source for all. And then I feel like there's one more for you in here. Energetic clearing. Girl, I think it's time for a clearing. During crises, the Holy One herself may be emptying you of fear and attachments, preparing you to receive her luminous plan. Yeah, um, if you are open to it, I would definitely recommend a shamanic clearing for you, especially since the word luminous is here. We work on the luminous field a lot um, in a shamanic clearing, and those are also great for releasing old cords. So those two things are meant for you. Uh, group number one, the divine source and energetic clearing your spirit guides want you to know that they are around you, that they're supporting you, but you certainly don't have to do this. It feels like there could have been some kind of obligatory feeling to like make it better, but spirit saying you don't have to make anything better. Um, it wasn't your fault. It just didn't work out. Okay. And it feels like you might have been getting this urge to clear it. Like it might have come up to you again. Um, and you thought, I just want to let that go. I just, I don't want to repeat that. Do I need to make up with them? What do I need to do? Just do you, girl. That is the answer. Um, the intuition brought you to this reading. It could bring you to a clearing or some other kind of self-care for yourself. But that is definitely the main takeaway here, that you are worthy of love. And you certainly don't have to prove yourself in order to get it. Um, and it's okay to let go. It's okay to let go and prioritize yourself. Okay, so those were your messages. If you chose group number one with the geode earrings, I'm sending you so much healing, love, and light. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. All right, so for those of you who chose group number two with the turquoise and gold earrings, let's go ahead and get your messages about reconciliation. Is your person ready to reconcile? Let's find out. We will start with tarot and move on from there. For group number two, I think this is most likely a friend, a friend that you have in mind, or could even um, translate as brother, sister, someone who would be kind of on the same generational line as you, maybe even a cousin. So the energy reads and feels like friendship. Okay, so let's get your tarot and get some more information about the situation. I'm getting the number five for you. So it could be a friend that you moved away from or just kind of drifted apart because some one of your lives changed drastically. So it could be someone, for example, someone you hung out with a lot in school, perhaps, and maybe you moved to a different town or, you know, started really busy careers and you just kind of drifted apart. But this would be a friend who was really, really important to you. Someone who was instrumental in your life at the time that you knew them. You could have even lived with this person. Okay. So for you, we have the three of cups. Perfect. Friendship energy. You might have gone out drinking and partying with this person. The chariot. The eight of coins. And then, of course, you can see the ace of wands down here. Okay. So. 
it feels like you were doing something together with this person. So like college would be a perfect example. It feels like maybe you were studying together or training for something at the same time. Because we have this social aspect where we're getting together, we have a group of friends, we're really close, we're confiding in each other. But there's also this energy of dedicating yourself to your craft, of working really, really hard, working yourself to the bone. So maybe you helped each other through that. Um, you could have had a lot of sleepless nights during this time. It also feels like perhaps writing was significant to you. So if you were in college, maybe you were working on thesis or um, research, stuff like that. There's this create creative energy here. So if the writing isn't, re isn't resonating, it could be that you were both in a really creative field. Like for example, I studied theater, I studied Shakespeare for a really long time. Um, but there's also this energy that you share with the chariot. So it's like really fast moving, like huge life momentum. So like winding up to make a huge life decision. So again, I'm getting college, 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 some type of really important training like that. It feels like this person would have helped you ground your thoughts because another element of the chariot is being pulled in two different directions and not being sure. So maybe you were considering changing your field of study or changing your job at the time. And your friend was always there to um, lend a comforting ear, but also to be like, we need to stop talking about this. Let's go treat ourselves and let's have fun. <laughs> so very good friend here. Okay. Yeah. Let's go ahead and get your spirit animals. Get a better idea of the energetic dynamic here. Connie asks, can it be siblings after our parents' death? Uh, I think I did say siblings. So I would say probably, but let's get, let's look at the rest of the layout. Sometimes that can help you get a yes or no if this is the group for you. All right. Well, there was one. Somebody's a gazelle. Okay, so let's get this person laid out. Oh, is that supposed to be reversed? Yep, they said yes. Mm. Now, I recently did a reading where I got one of these chakras wrong, so I do want to pull the book and make sure that I'm getting that right. And for the other person here, we have frog. And unicorn, whoa, you are both very spiritual beings. You both got spirit cards. There's only seven spirit cards in this entire deck. So Connie, I think that lends itself to your situation since there was a spiritual experience there dealing with transitioning into another realm. So let me get the book really quick. My cat was sleeping and just looked at me like, why did you move? <laughs> Oh, that could be, that could be a message right there. It could be that one of you had to move and the other person might have felt left behind or you felt like you had to leave behind the relationship. Okay, so sea serpent. I want to know what chakra that is. Healing emotional wounds, expressing desires. So someone was blocked here and that's the second chakra. So creativity. Mm, okay. So let's talk, let's break down these personalities. The first one we have, uh, we have a blocked sacral chakra. So this would mean, um, and this would line up with gazelle or yeah, gazelle, um, with the fiery energy, someone very, very creative, but when they're blocked, they are blocked. They just totally shut down. Um, they do not know what to do. They either wouldn't do anything or they might hop frantically from one subject to another. Uh, maybe if I'm dynamic enough, I can kind of stir something up or make it happen. Uh, this other person over here, 
feels much more stable. The frog is really special to me because it is often associated with ancient shamanism. So this is someone who is used to moving between realms. If this is you, you might like astral project, you might remember your dreams. Um, and you know, unicorn, very, very spiritual. I believe this is the crown chakra. So it could be, you know, if you were, it feels like there's the shared experience, there's this shared learning experience. Let me make, let me open that up a little bit more than just like college or a course. It feels like you both were learning the same thing at the same time. If that makes sense, it does feel like your peers. It feels like you would be about the same age, but I'm feeling like this is you. And I feel like this is the other person. Of course, this is a general reading. So this could be flipped. It feels like at the time you were much, much more open to a spiritual experience and more um, flexible than this person, but this person was just very, very blocked. Okay, so when the sacral center is blocked, that means the fight, flight, or freeze reflex has been tripped. So it could be that this person did not feel safe with what was going on and just said, nope, I'm not experiencing this at all. And um, it could have left you feeling like you had to kind of lead them or just watch over them. You could have wound up being quite worried but also you could have taken on more burden than you needed to. Okay. So let's see what the shared lesson is here with group number two. Let's see what the shared lesson is to help us understand if we are ready for reconciliation. We're going to knock. Courage. I find the inner strength to face fear with confidence. Yeah. That definitely goes with the chariot. So if you had to make a joint decision, it feels like even where are we going to eat tonight? It feels like you would be pretty much heading that up. <laughs> The other person might just kind of deflect decision making or just feel uncomfortable calling the shots. It feels like you were really a guiding light for this person. I feel like they miss you quite a bit. Okay, I think next we did um, Angels and Ancestors for more shared energy and advice for you, group number two. Are you ready to reconcile? Is your person ready to reconcile? Hunter, track down your fears and desires. Wow. We have a lot about uh, facing fear in here. But oddly enough, um, like the scenario I was first getting like a shared learning experience, it feels like whatever ended up happening is not what you signed up for, if that makes sense. So it would be like, um, I'll tell you, I'll just throw out my experience. Um, <laughs> it's like, I went to college and my dad died. So it's like, that's not what I signed up for, right? But I had to work through all of this really difficult stuff um, at a weird time, at a weird specific time when I was there to do something else. Does that make sense? It feels like we got together to do one thing and then something else happened. Um, and it felt, it feels like you were the one who really helped this person face it head on. It feels like had you not been there, not nearly as much would have been accomplished Okay. And now let's get an affirmation for both of you to feel out where you're sitting in your energy right now. See if we're ready to reconcile with your person. Oh, okay. It's very clearly theirs. How about yours? Oh, okay. So for you, we have the point of power is always in the present moment. The past is, an, is over and done and has no power over me. 
I can begin to be free in this moment. Today's thoughts create my future. I am in charge. I now take my own power back. I am safe and I am free. Yeah. Ooh, look, and you have the Ace of Wands pointing down at you. Maybe you are the writer and they were the one wanting to do recreational stuff. <laughs> like, let's just have fun. And you're like, let's get our work done. Okay. And then this person, I trust my inner wisdom. Oh, okay. So if you were worried about this person at all, it feels like they have made progress since this time in your life. As I go about my daily affairs, I listen to my own guidance. My intuition is always on my side. I trust it to be there at all times. I am safe. I love that. Okay, and then now let's get your message from your person. If group two's person could ask them anything, what would it be? We have, what good friend have you lost touch with? Oh my gosh. We were just saying the whole time how this would either be about a peer, someone who gives off friendship energy or sibling. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. Text, email, or write them a letter today. Guys, that's your message. This person is ready to reconcile and it's time to write them. Text, email, or write them a letter. I can hardly even believe that. Wow. What moved you? I feel like you moved. Group number two, one of you moved. That message has come up several times. Oh, that was so cool. Oh, I was torn whether or not to do this, but I thought, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it for everybody. I just love that those synchronicities came out. That was so powerful. Okay. All right. So I know we already got your grand finale. You know that they're ready to reconcile now, but still, let's get your divine abundance cards as just what to remember final advice for you group number two the unicorn energy over here <laughs> Ooh, another message i'm getting about you um, with the frog here they're pointing to the rain so it feels like you have dealt with more hardship overall than this person has so it could have just been when this happened you kind of knew more what to do because you've navigated it before, but it could have been that this person was so uncomfortable feeling a lot of emotion like that, that they were just like, uh, no, thank you. Don't like this. <laughs> okay. All right. Energetic clearing again. Oh my gosh. So what I'm getting from that card, not only may you benefit from a clearing, a shamanic clearing specifically, but it feels like there might be a cord going on that we can take care of. So make sure that you're putting up your energetic bubble, your aura bubble, make sure that you are holding your boundaries, okay? Gratitude. Fill me with gratitude for all you give. May I be a vehicle for you wherever I go. Yeah, I feel like you were this person's guiding light in a time of extreme darkness. Um, yeah, and it feels like one of you moved or had to go back home after this was dealt with, and this person is really missing you. But please be aware that, um, you know, you can cut a cord without cutting someone out of your life. That's not what that means. So when we cut a cord, it just means that the shadow elements are being removed the love will always remain. Cutting cords does not affect love at all. But sometimes unconsciously, we can connect to people in a shadow element or an unhealthy cycle because we, we want it or we're used to it. So that is something they wanted me to talk to you, particularly group number two, um, about is I feel like there's a cord. Check on your sacral chakra as well, okay? Make sure you're really taking care of yourself and protecting yourself. All right, so those were your messages. If you chose group number two with the turquoise and gold earrings, uh, they are ready to reconcile. So congratulations. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Okay, so for those of you who chose group number three with these layered earrings, let's go ahead and find out if your person is ready to reconcile. If you chose this third group, this probably is a relationship in the family. 
it could more specifically, we'll get some cards, of course, it could more specifically be parent-child. Um, yeah. They're like, don't say anything else yet. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Right. For group number three, what do they need to know, spirit? Are they ready to reconcile with their person? Are they ready to reconcile with their person? Oh. Okay. Group three, ready to reconcile with their person. They also wanted me to throw out that you can come back to this reading and pick again <laughs> for different relationships or different things that might come up. Okay. All right. So let's see. For you, we have the King of Cups. And then I'm sur sure you saw that uh, Eight of Swords sitting there. Hmm. We also have justice. Okay. And the two of wands reversed. Or is that upright? They say upright. Two of wands upright. Okay. All right. With justice, someone could be a Libra, sun, moon, or rising. Also getting Gemini over here, Sun, Moon, or Rising. Doesn't have to be, just some dynamics that I'm seeing. It feels like with this person, there may have been a breakdown in communication. With this Eight of Swords, this is a card of self-imprisonment. And swords represent thoughts, uh, mental clutter. So this person could have gotten themselves stuck mentally, if that makes sense. Hmm. It feels like there's a pretty strong divide right here. I'm interested in, in what else comes out because in this dynamic, if we have a king of cups, usually we can work this out. A king of cups is someone who's extremely compassionate, perhaps even psychic, very intuitive, master communicator, um, very, very loving leader. That's the king of cups. Um, but for whatever reason, this king of cups has completely shut themselves down, has made themselves feel like it is impossible to move forward. But if you notice the beautiful thing about the eight of swords is this person can actually just stand up um, and take this stuff off and walk away. So it is a self-imposed um, feeling of I'm stuck. I can't move forward. I don't know what to say. It feels like they are blocking themselves here and it's a mental block um, that is manifesting in the form of communication. So it could be that this person is literally silent. Um, it does feel like with justice here, Hmm. We might need to get a little more clarity on this. Huh. This is sticky, group number three. I'm sorry. This either could mean that the law was involved, okay? Um, that someone had to intervene and make things fair again. So it could be... Um, that a score needs to be settled still, that something needs to be made even. It feels like the scales have not balanced quite yet. And that could be why this person is just choosing not to speak. They may feel that that is inappropriate. It could be that someone has told them, don't talk about this until the next step in this process has happened. I'm really sorry. It almost feels like I just want to cry about this. This is just painful. Um, with the two of wands, I can see that um, one of the two of you is trying to move forward, but feeling really torn, 
feeling really torn in two different directions. This would be the Gemini energy. Feeling like I really miss them and I really want to talk to them. I really love them. They would never hear me out. It's inappropriate to talk. I don't know what to do. It's like they're having this conversation with themselves. And in the middle, there's all of these swords dividing you two. So it almost feels like I'm hearing a narrative. Again, this doesn't necessarily mean this is true, right? This is perceived truth. It feels like I'm hearing somebody say to themselves, there's way too much damage that's been done. It can't be recovered. Or can it be recovered? It feels like there's this ongoing kind of circular conversation. Um, so let's go ahead and get your spirit animal energy to get a better idea of this dynamic. So let's start with this King of Cups person. So as you'll notice, um, unlike the other first two readings, even from the tarot, you were divided. This is a pretty deep divide, but it feels painful. It feels, it does feel painful. Okay. It feels painful and confusing, right? Okay. Oh, we're gonna try to take those. Got it, awesome, okay. So we'll start over here apparently. <laughs> Sometimes my hands are just moving. Um, we have the deer. It's definitely more of that family energy. Oh, whoops. And the turtle. This person feels so disoriented. They don't even know up from down right now. So if that's something that you've been wondering about, yeah, they're super all over the place. They're kind of in survival mode. It feels like they have somebody else guiding them. Okay, so if that was something that you were curious about, it does feel like they're receiving um, advice from someone who is experienced in this field. So if you are unfortunately dealing with a legal situation, they would probably be consulting with a lawyer to make sure that they're doing the right thing. If you're not, they're probably speaking with a counselor, okay, to just make sure that they're not making it worse is what it feels like. I don't want to make this worse. Okay, and then for you, we have Otter. I feel like this is you if you're group number three. Again, it could be either. And we have Whale. Lots of water for you. Look at that. King of Cups and two water signs or two water animals. So this personality would be, well, I believe this is the master of the water suit in this deck. And then you also have the other master of water. So you are someone, if this is you, if you identify with this side and not this side, this would be someone who has mastered their emotional body or has committed their life to mastering their emotional body, seeking guidance when you need it, seeking therapy, self-care things, um, energetic healing when you need it. This is someone who's very wise and very intuitive. However, we do still have this block just showing like, even if you are a master, we can still have blocks. You know, it happens to everybody. But also you have this otter down here, which is so playful, so friendly, so joyful. And I can see this otter just peering over like, do they want to be my friend again? Like this is just a very joyful, pure energy. This party does feel more conservative than you. Definitely more earth energy, although we do have water. So we do have that shared tie of water through here. So something that you share in common is emotions. We're wading through emotions. This person is much slower moving than you are. Again, just to make sure that they are protecting themselves. This could have to do with their house and their possessions as well. Just making sure that their foundation is still steady. And then with the deer, they're shifting more because they can feel how severe this energy is, all these swords up here. They're shifting more into the heart chakra. With the turtle, the turtle tends to be a little more introverted, so they may not have shared this with you yet, but they are more in the heart right now and reaffirming to themselves this person is family to me this person is very important to me I don't want to lose them but I do not want to disturb any peace that's left <laughs> from the fallout of this situation so they definitely again that message of I don't want to make anything worse is coming up over here 
this party, which again, I feel is more tied to the viewer of group number three, is more genuinely curious, already thinking of ways to negotiate and work it out. You're like, I know we can talk about this. I still really care about them. I feel like it's almost like an otter personality would not want to miss your birthday. Like they would want to send you something. They would want to get along with everyone. The otter is just a really adorable and very genuine energy. So let's get your shared lesson here with group number three. All right. Oh, we have judgment again. Interesting how that's in the center of two different conflicts, two different groups. I understand that everyone has their own unique path and challenges. Okay, I feel like there's one more. Failure. I understand that a mistake is only an opportunity to learn. Okay. Interesting. So whatever has happened between you feels like it has not happened before. And it feels like at least one of the parties is going, oh man, I really messed that up or I really shouldn't have done that. Um, and they're wanting a do over. So let's get some angels and oracle guide or angels and ancestor guidance. See if they're ready to do over, if they're ready to reconcile. Oh. Peacemaker. Let go of the need to be right. Let me get a couple of these here. Mountains, stand your ground. Okay. Again, since this person is receiving advice, they could be being told to do this. Wow. Your cards fly all over the place. Okay. I feel like that's way too many. We're actually going to put them all back. <laughs> I'm sorry. It was like five cards. We have more decks to go through for you. Okay. Earth Guardian, stay rooted and grounded. So that's the most important thing for both of you. It feels like you are more focused on peacekeeper energy and letting go of maybe an emotional reaction you had at first. And this person is just kind of digging their heels in, unfortunately. But again, it could just be advice that they're being given. So I'm hearing from spirit that that's not anything that um, should be interpreted in a, in a really personal way. Th this just feels convenient. It feels like they've just been told this. This is like the most conservative. This is the safest cho choice for them to do right now. They definitely don't want to put themselves out there. I'm getting that very clearly. Okay, let's go ahead and get their question for you for group number three. If their person could ask them anything, Spirit, what would it be? We have for you, list a skill you've gained through hard work. And when has luck been on your side? Hmm. Huh. So I'm a Sagittarius. That means I will tell you what I'm feeling. And from your person, this is what I'm feeling. And that's unfortunate. It seems, at least on a surface level, they would kind of bite back. Um, if you were to attempt to resolve things with them, feels like it might be a bit too soon is what I'm hearing. And those questions to me, it could be that the dates or something else that you saw on those pages were significant to you. But to me, the questions, um, when has luck been on your side and um, something about working hard, it felt judgmental. Um, so it feels like 
this party is committed to being correct, <laughs> whereas this party is committed to peace and love. So we're not quite aligned just yet. Um, let's get some final guidance here. Let's get your affirmations to feel out where you are sitting in the energetic body. Um, let's get yours and then theirs. I feel like you're pe peeking out back here. I love my body. I create peacefulness in my mind and my body reflects this peacefulness as perfect health. You could be focused on your physical health as well. So again, reaffirming the peacemaker role that you're playing over here. They have three. Could be that that number is significant to you, but I will just quickly read these out. Life supports me. I am open and receptive to new avenues of income and everything I touch is a success. This person is, or this party, is committed to winning. Uh, they're really focused on their finances right now. They could be struggling and trying to keep their head above water and trying to just maintain as much stability as possible. Okay. So let's get your final guidance through the Divine Abundance deck. Since it feels like we already got a caution of they're not quite ready to meet you where you're at. Which to me, a peacemaker has dealt with the emotional. They've dealt with the mental challenges. They're actually embodying a spiritual principle as a peacemaker. So it feels like this person's not quite there yet. It feels like they're getting some more worldly things in order. So they're very focused on their material situation, making sure the house is okay, finances, resources. So it feels like once more of that gets sorted out, uh, yeah, because again, the grounding. So they need to ground more before the reconciliation can truly happen. Um, any final messages for group number three, Spirit? Final messages about their reconciliation. So long story short, I feel like you are ready, uh, but I am not feeling that this person would be open and receptive in the same way that you are. Let's see what they have for us. Oh, my ring got caught. Okay. Reframe. Look at that box down there too. Interesting. This is happening for me, not to me. Ooh, I love that. And also, sacrifice. Sometimes surrender is painful. God's cutting away all that needs to go. Illusions, obsessions, addiction. It's a sacrifice to love. I feel like you have sacrificed the need to be correct and the need to come out on top. It feels like this person is not quite ready to let go of that. They feel a bit more competitive. So it feels like Maybe something in this situation is physically changing. Maybe there's like a move or something with this box. Maybe supplies are being moved around. It feels like something needs to physically transform about the situation. If you're in one place right now, maybe you'll move or more physical distance will create actually an opening for you to be able to talk again as you used to be able to. But it feels again that a reframing needs to take place over here. I feel like there's one more message left for you for group number three. Okay. Let's get your final takeaway. All right. Take it lightly. Take it lightly. You might actually see feathers around during this time. Yeah, it's almost like this might be, if this might sound crazy right now, this might be something that you're able to laugh about later on <laughs> with take it lightly. But it's more like I'm getting this feeling of don't take things so personally. So it feels like this person will actually come back to you in time after they feel safe. They literally don't feel safe right now for some reason. Their foundation has been shaken really badly. Um, so they're regaining their footing, they're in survival mode, they're getting their 
their stuff together. And so it's like there's this there's this invitation to continue being patient and curious in a loving way. So those were your messages for those of you who chose group number three with the layered earrings. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. If I can get these things. Oh, the note, there's a final message for you, is that you don't have to try to put this all back together by yourself. Okay. You definitely don't need to do that. Um, so that, that was a, a, a last little message hanging on for you, group number three. Thank you so much. Take care, and I will see you next time.